Finally here at 7, a groundbreaking trio of space missions just launched, set to deepen our understanding of the sun's influence and protect Earth from the constant flow of solar activity. Newswatch 16 meteorologist Jeremy Luan spoke to a scientist at the Space Weather Prediction Center for this month's Skywatch 16. Engines full power and lift off. Go Falcon, go IMAP, go Swippo L1, and go Corruptors. Last week, NASA and NOAA launched three new missions together aboard a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket from Kennedy Space Center. All three missions are headed to a special spot in space called the Sun-Earth Lagrange Point 1, a gravitational balancing point about a million miles from Earth, where spacecraft can hover between Earth and the Sun, maintaining a stable position with minimal fuel to constantly monitor solar activity. I spoke with Sean Dahl, a servicing coordinator and senior space weather forecaster. I've been 10 years here at the Space Weather Prediction Center. The space weather has things like coronal mass ejections, solar flares, sunspots, radiation storms, but they still affect our outer layers of our atmosphere, that ionosphere, and how radio signals go through there or GPS signals try to come down from there. The satellites that are currently in place to warn us of dangerous solar activity are failing. We've had a research satellite out there that's decades old that's going to run out of fuel in a year. That's what we're relying on today. The new mission should vastly improve the ability to forecast space weather. Swiffle L1, the space weather follow-on mission, is the most important for us because that is the world's first dedicated operational space weather satellite sitting at the Lock Grange Point 1 that you're talking about. So Swiffle L1 is extremely vital to us because it's going to give us very modern technology observational equipment to measure solar wind and magnetic fields and energetic particles that come from the sun. The other two um, are going to help in that science. IMAP will help in the science by mapping the heliosphere, the protective bubble around our solar system that shields us from interstellar radiation, delivering near real-time solar wind data, helping scientists predict impactful space weather events. The Carruthers Geocorona Observatory will track how Earth's outer atmosphere reacts to solar activity. Now, Sean, when you uh, forecast for the Space Weather Prediction Center, a lot of our viewers love to see when their auroras are possible. I asked Sean if these new missions would help us to more accurately forecast auroras. Yes, Jeremy, that is the hope. Magnetically, solar wind speed, what the orientation of the magnetic field is. We find that out when it arrives at that satellite one million miles from Earth. So at that point, it's 15 minutes to an hour away. And the instrumentation will also give current and future astronauts more lead time when dangerous radiation is on the way. We have several missions coming up that are going to send astronauts back to space, right? We're going back to the moon. Artemis II next spring hopefully will launch. They will be outside our protective magnetic shield. They, they will be exposed to these harmful energetic particles. This is going to make a huge difference. Having several pieces of equipment rideshare on the same rocket seems to be NASA's new MO, accelerating space missions. Doing this type of thing saves so much money for the taxpayers. Not only allows things to go up faster, but saves a lot of money. With this launch, scientists help to usher a new era of space weather and aurora forecasting, giving us earlier warnings and a better understanding of the sun's powerful influence on our planet. Jeremy Lewan, Newswatch 16.